So I'll admit I've been playing a lot of Persona 3 Reload recently and I actually just finished the game today and I've been trying to kind of like keep up with Yu-Gi-Oh and also play test here and there as the ice cream man goes outside my door. And honestly, like I'm already kind of sick of this format. So as they said in the Super Bowl, pull up your pants, take off that bra and be a man. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most Avery LR32. You're in destroy the ever living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. I got my mic sitting right down here, so don't you dare clip that. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, hope you're having a fantastic day. I was supposed to work today, but your boy's not feeling well. So I was like, I'm going to finish up playing Persona 3 Reload. But I've been kind of taking a break from the game ever since I got my invite with Centurion. Shameless plug. That's why we're the self-appointed Centurion King. <laughs> but... I wanted to try and play this format a little bit, and I thought, okay, I'm going to pick up Fire King, like, not IRL, I'm not spending my money on that deck, but I was like, let me build it on EDO Pro, let me play it, and from what games I've played, like, I'm not a combo player, I'm a very much a mid-range player, as much as I want to be a combo player, I have to admit to myself that I'm not. I understand the basic lines of Fire King, I understand that you want to end on the Flamberge with the Mask Reina and all that other stuff, but the ability to identify what decks you're best with and which decks you aren't best with is what will lead you to be a successful player if you're playing the best deck in the room and it's you know let's just say it's a combo deck let's just take fire king for an example but you're not a combo player even if you learn those combo lines if you have 50 options available to you in your opening hand and you make the wrong choice then it's going to hurt you overall Compared to if you played the deck that's not as powerful, like a mid-range deck in my case, like something like Centurion, I feel is very mid-range. Because there's less options, therefore there's less of a chance to mess up. As long as you play your hand traps right and you know the choke points against other decks, you're going to be fine, right? So, I've been trying to play Fire Kings. I even tried to rebuild Centurion and play it with the Horus cards, even though I'm not a fan of the Horus cards, just because they can be really bricky. <sighs> this format is boring. And I know that that's really weird to say because we just got Phantom Nightmare not too long ago. Ignoring the high price point of a lot of these decks right now, right? It's just a boring format. Like, do you open up the hand traps that stop the Fire King player or don't you? If you don't, then you lose. If you're playing Ubel even and you don't open up like Shifter or Super Poly, you lose. Like, I was really excited for Ubel, and I'm still kind of excited for the deck because it has topped a couple regionals, and it is a very good rogue deck. But if you don't open the outs to the opponent, you're just kind of losing. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, well, Avery, that's the case for every format. But especially with something with like Fire King that is so goddamn resilient that... It's, it's just crazy like how much stuff you have to open just to beat it. And I've seen some replays and stuff where like Shadal Fusion can out the board, but then you got to worry about Ash and all these other things. I don't really think Shadal Fusion is like the best thing. Some people are hyping it up and I'm like, it's kind of liquid ass with big old chunks inside because not every deck can play it. So I've just been mostly like taking a break because I figured, you know what, I've got my invite. As of right now, at least, I'm planning on going to Nationals as long as my health is fine. I've been dealing with heart issues and stuff that I've talked about on the channel before. And so I, I just figured I'm going to kind of take a step back. I'm not going to spend over $1,000 on Fire King. Even with my idea of buying whatever deck I want to play and then turning around and selling it, even if I lose $10 or whatever, then that's fine. Regardless, though, I don't want to be dealing with Fire King in the format. And that's not to say that Fire King is tier zero. Fire King is a beatable deck. D shifter just craps all over the deck. But again, you have to see that out, right? And it just leads to just the format being boring. Even if you have these rogue options available to you, you know, I would argue that in a format like this, even if you're playing something like Goaty, Runic, Ubel, whatever, more of a rogue pick, or even something that's more like tier two or tier 1.5, even though I hate saying 1.5 because you might as well just make it tier one, but something like Centurion, Labyrinth, whatever, you want to prepare for the best deck in the room. You want to prepare to go against something like Fire King or even Rescue Ace, maybe to a lesser extent, depending on your local meta, or maybe you're the one guy in the room playing fucking Raid Raptor. I still think of that deck's garbage, <laughs> but I just don't see the appeal in playing in not a stale format but 
just one that just seemed very monotonous and tedious. It's definitely not as bad as Tier Element when they were Tier 0, right? Like, there's a reason. It's actually kind of funny. I did a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth video on how to play Tier uh, for the start of the last format. And it actually got a decent amount of hate. And that's, I feel, mostly just because of the fact people hate fucking Tier. Like, Tier Element was such an insane deck that... Even sprite decks, like if you just played pure sprite, you had to play 12 to 15 hand traps just to try to stop tier because tier had so much gas that it could play through so many hand traps. Oh, and by the way, they have an out to Nibiru in the form of Rukalos, and if they do get nibbed, they can usually just play through it. It was absolutely insane. Luckily, we don't really see that with Fire King because the deck can get nibbed. It's just the issue is that the format becomes a game of 4D chess where... If Nib is in the format or you're going into a YCS or regional and you're expecting Nib, you're going to make certain plays to it, to uh, bypass the Nib or to put up a negate before the Nib or just stop on four summons so that they can't get Nibbed. Whereas if Nib's not in the format, then they're going to pop off, make an even crazier board. So you're constantly playing this teeter-totter game of, okay, Nib's in the format, I'm going to make this play. Okay, Nib is now in the format, I'm going to make this play. And it's just so asinine because, like, especially now in 2024 where formats can change so quickly, formats can change week to week. This is very different from the times of, like, Edison and 2008, 2009, like, Teledad format and all that. Hell, even 2013 with Dragon Rulers, where we are in such a digital age now and we have all of these different simulators. I'm not including Master Shits for obvious reasons. But you have all of this digital age stuff available to you that the format can change so quickly. Someone like me or you or whoever the fuck can come up with, you know, a tech like, say, Shadal Fusion. And the first person that posts it on YouTube gets a decent amount of views. And then it takes off like wildfire if it's a decent, like, tech card. You know, like, I would say we were what? Like, a couple weeks away from Phantom Nightmare dropping and I saw someone drop a video talking about Shadal Fusion and how it just outs the whole fucking Fire King board. And so now, like, you have that information available to you. A couple weeks later, someone else comes up with another tech. A couple more weeks or even, like, a week later, a couple days later sometimes, someone comes up with another tech. And then before you know it, like, everybody's playing Soul Release or Ghost Bell or whatever the case may be. And I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, you know, Road of the King, like you can see what's going on in the OCG, you have an idea. That's always been the case. Like I remember back in the day looking at Shriek OCG. For all y'all uh, OGs like your boy, you remember Shriek OCG. Shriek OCG was basically the old school version of YGO organization where you went on that website at like fucking two o'clock in the morning to see what your ban list was going to be because at the back then the ocg and tcg were linked they were tied at the hip with their ban list so at like two o'clock in the morning you'd go on shriek ocg see what the ocg ban list is and then you knew what it was going to be for the tcg so shriek ocg was like the old school way before road of the king to find out what ocg decks were playing for like dragon or the format teledad edison what have you right and now we have so much information at our fingertips that the format changes so quick, which does in a way make it more fresh instead of it being like, especially now that we get balance every three to four months instead of like every six to nine months. But it makes it fresh in that regard. But in the sense of what decks people are playing, it makes it really stale. Like if I was going into a regional this weekend, which there actually is one in Florida this weekend, obviously I'm not going I would be assuming I'm playing Fire King every round because Fire King is just that good. Whether, you know, they pop off and go full combo because they don't care about Nib. They got Promethean Princess in the grave. They got Flamberge, Masquerade in the back row. They're going to kick your nuts in the face uh, with, you know, um, uh, SP Little Knight or an Apollosa, like whatever. I would build my deck to stop Fire King. And just the, the matches that I've played, I'm like, I just don't want to deal with this. And... Especially, I guess it's more too also because of the fact that I do have my invite, so I don't have to worry about it, unlike other people. But even though I am hungry to get like that first place regional win or top of YCS, I'm not so hungry to the point that I'm going to sweat my nuts off just to like learn every out to Fire King and all of this other crap. Like, I'm excited for the Exodia support. It's going to be liquid ass because playing five bricks, a deck is going to be garbage with five bricks. I'm sorry, but it's going to be garbage. I'm excited for it, but we're also going to probably have a new ban list by that point because you have to keep in mind, like, we get Legacy of Destruction and then Infinite Forbidden. So Infinite Forbidden is probably like eh, five, six months away, something like that. 
So we have a while. Like we're probably not going to get a new balance for Legacy or Destruction. I wish that we would, but probably not. But I feel like at times like this, it's best to take a break from the game and kind of just sit back and watch and see what unfolds. Still keep up with the game. Keep your knowledge up so that, you know, you're not just going cold turkey and like just letting the game pass you by because you want to keep your skills up, right? You don't want to just like ignore the game and then you take your, I don't know, Flunder deck to a regional and your asshole gets stomped in raw. No lubricant required because you weren't prepared. So... Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What are you doing this format? I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm pulling my pants up, taking off my bra, and I'm being a man. Guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.